Pete Carroll deserves a little bit more credit is what AQ is yep. saying. He fucking seen it. He saw Team 3 growing a little bit bigger, saw Russ maybe worrying about some other stuff mm-hmm. on the field whenever they weren't doing certain plays because Pete's got to watch every single play mm-hmm. in practice and in the game. He's watching everything. He's getting reports from every single coach. He would be the motherfucker that would know before anybody else. So whenever numerous people come in and say to him, hey, we can't do this anymore because Russ doesn't want to. Russ doesn't want to do, so we got to do this. And Pete's like, that's why we're fucking, that's why we're good. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. So then Pete Carroll says, all right, we'll finally trade this guy. Even though somebody, attempted, Chicago Bears last year attempted to do it. Yep. Yes. I want to get another year look at this thing. And you're thinking that Pete Carroll deserves a lot more credit in forecasting what Russell Wilson was going to be, as opposed to Nathaniel Hackett getting buried mm-hmm. for Nathaniel Hackett's <laughs> offense being pretty shitty, it appears. Is that, uh, you think it's Pete or you think it's Hackett? I think it's probably a little bit of both, right? I think... The Seattle Seahawks have always had a really good running game. Denver, no run game, right? No, no run right game. Right. Gordon's on a silent. Murray's a big yeah. fuck, though. He Huge. Is. I forgot how big Latavius Murray is. Yeah. yeah running backs hurt, too. Javante Williams out. out for the year. Mm-hmm. Murray's big. He's a big yeah. dog, yeah. I, I thought they were going to continue to feed him, actually, because it seemed like he was moving a little bit. Now, Gordon was in any time touchdown score. I think he had, like, the third highest odds or the fourth highest odds. Yep. So him not being on the field was certainly surprising. But when I saw the Davies Murray, I'm like, oh, God damn, that guy's still fucking very big. And they didn't use him at all. Denver has next to no running game right now. They have next to no running game. And, and whatever the reason is, right, they got some injuries on the offensive line. They got whatever. But at the end of the day, they don't have a running game. And Russell was always able to have that in Seattle. He was always able to have a pretty good defense except for the last couple years. But he's not doing anything. He can't. He's not completing passes. He's not extending plays, making plays. He's not doing shit. Right How do you now. feel about Marshawn Lynch and Richard Sherman alluding to the fact that they were never able to get a hold of Russell Wilson? They had to go through his team to get a hold of him. That's tough. That's tough. I think yeah. so too. That's tough. Like just as somebody, and this is, I have been teammates with people that I should not be teammates with, mm-hmm. in all aspects of life here. You know, mm-hmm. in every genre, I've had the ability to be teammates with people that are, you know, folk heroes and legends. Every single person. Able to get a hold of him. No problem. Sure. Calm. Because you're part of the team. You know, like, yeah. it, I'm, not, I'm not talking about just with the Colts and obviously being able to text Peyton. I'm the fucking punter and Peyton's inviting me to the thing, able to text him, hit, hit him up, talk to his fucking dad. If I, I mean, like, that is there's something I think a lot of people could do. WWE, I mean, as soon as I get there, everybody that's at the top of that fucking team is like, hey, you need anything, you hit us up right here. I get to fucking ESPN right now. Literally everybody is like, hey, you need to get a hold of me, here's my number, here's how it goes. These are all legends of people that are, you know, because whenever I'm talking about WWE, I'm talking about like fucking Brock and that Vince fucking yeah. everybody was like, hey, you need anything, you fucking, to Kevin Dunn, Bruce Pritchard, everybody was like, you need anything, you text Michael, Co- you text me directly. It's like, I assume that's how good teams operate. Like, hey, if you need to make something happen, let's make something happen. So so whenever Richard Sherman and uh, Marshawn Lynch were like, yeah, we would have to text his team to get a hold of him. I'm like, so he's already putting up a barrier with the rest of his team, right? That's just naturally what you're putting up there. That's not a good way to fucking build friends, earn trust, or lead, I don't nope. think, AQ. No, the locker room is everything, right? That's that's When you're done playing, that's what you miss. You miss the camaraderie. You miss the locker room. You miss yeah, all that Yeah, that's why you stuff. come in here and fuck up all my shit. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Done it's it. on your yep. toilet. Oh, yeah, every, yeah. every week. Yeah, I don't awesome. understand why you locked that door. I don't get it. That's no. literally my only room that I have like to myself. I so, was really looking forward to spending a little time in there. You and me were the only ones going into the bathroom in there. And they just put the lock on within the last week. And I had to really consider when you were coming in here. I'm like, do I let AQ come in here and continue to just demolish my toilet? Right. Mm-hmm. Piss all over the floor. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then leave, you know, whatever the Cubes, fuck. And then just walk yeah. out. Yep. Do I want to continue to do that? Or do I maybe want to let AQ know? All right. Yeah, draw a line. Everything you were doing the last couple of weeks, you were the only person in there other than me. Uh, but I'll, You made your point. No, but I think I left it locked, honestly. I, that wasn't for me? I, that was not on purpose, no. Oh, okay. It was actually we'll just – because I almost left my fucking keys in there. a happy coincidence. I was almost, it was a happy coincidence, which yeah. I should almost now, like – now that I think about yeah, it, it's forward. Standard, Maybe I, should, uh-huh. I should lock it going forward. But it is a real thing. Like, I don't know how any team does well. Like, I don't know how they had that much success almost, I'm thinking now. If Russell Wilson was that um, – extended no disconnected disconnected from the program and from the team we're learning a lot more now i think about russ than we ever have in the past and i don't know if it's all good how long can russ just maintain this super positive always good guy outlook with everything we're hearing at some point we're going to see a human russ you know and that's what i think is going to happen at some point i thought maybe last night we'd see it because of how the second half ended and how that game went and how just you know it it is a Terrible brain of football that they're playing. So yeah. bad. Herbstreit huh? talked about it whenever he called the game. He's like, you know, we got a new offense coordinator, 
new quarterback. Nobody knows what's going on. While they're still trying to build their culture and build their rules and their guidelines and how they go about doing things, like there's a lot figuring out. I get that. But whenever you're a Broncos fan, you're paying 200 and some million dollars, and you've been told for a long time you're one quarterback away from going to the Super Bowl, and then a quarterback that has won the Super Bowl before comes in, he's being heralded as, oh, this guy goes and puts his pads on, plays catch him on a right. This guy's more prepared than anybody. This guy's the smartest quarterback of all time, which is kind of what we've all said because I think that's what we've all been, you know, told and believe. And he's had a lot of – and it's just terrible fucking – I can't say it's enough. The Broncos on primetime – are doing the NFL a disservice right now. Russell Wilson, Nathaniel Hackett, who I know all your friends say good things about, he seems to be in over his head. The Broncos seem to not really have a clue what's going on offensively. Their games are boring. Their defense is good. Chargers get a win. What's your thought, AJ, just as a whole on last night's Monday Night Football matchup? I mean, the bizarre offense of the Denver, Denver Broncos just continues. I feel like at some point, is Russ going to look like Russ? And I understand what shoulder now he has a hamstring I can't make it any easier for him to try to get back on track but still like missing some easy throws and not seeing like simple check downs or open receivers it's just it's weird I don't know I don't know if his head's spinning if there's too much going on for him or what it is but just a bizarre situation I feel like I actually thought last night like did this guy take some sort of plant or drug oh. that made him forget how to play football huh. awesome. 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 that check down to the tight end right in front of him yep. when he got sacked mm -hmm. That touchdown last week to win it, uh -huh. it's like these are wide open fucking guys. So I know we want to hammer hack it because he might be in over his head. And when he does press conferences and some of the decisions he makes, and he's already hired somebody in to help him out with situational management, which we appreciate him addressing it. But him having to hire somebody makes us automatically say, uh, you don't think you can handle it. It's a no-win situation for Hackett. But it seems like Russell Wilson is just, you know, is he – He's just not confident in what he's seeing. You think he's not trusting his eyes? Has he lost his confidence? I see him walking with his good man brand. Yeah. I don't think he's lost any confidence, has he? That might be it, though. It might be that he lost his confidence, it, doesn't trust himself. I don't know. Con I mean, he seems to be super confident in every video he puts out or everything he says in the media. But done, how he does carry himself on the field during the game, like I pay a lot of attention to see like how he's interacting after a three and out, how he goes to the sideline, what he's doing. It doesn't seem like he's talking to a whole lot of people. Well, and then Sherman and Marshawn Lynch said that they would hit him up and tell him, like, hey, everything's going to be okay. Yeah. But to do that, they got to go through his team to get to him. And I wonder if that's what the Broncos – That are. was a bit concerning. That's absurd. We, AQ and I talked about that earlier. And I mentioned how – not only in like football, but like I go to the WWE, go to ESPN, this particular show, anywhere that I've I felt like, oh, I'm part of a pretty good team here. Everybody is attainable. Everybody is like actually like, hey, you need anything, you ask me. Now, I'm busy, so I might not fucking get back to you like in the first two minutes. But if you need something, here it is. The fact that that didn't happen all those years in Seattle, I'm surprised they won as much as they did, yeah. AJ. I'm surprised they won as much as they did. Well, I wonder how... How long it took for Russ to get to that stage to where he did have – he was sending friends and teammates through a manager. Like, he didn't come to town with that, did he? I would assume it, that all grew as he became Russ and won a Super Bowl, went to another one. That all started to, to grow as he got there. And I guess they're probably – the guys that were in Seattle probably saw Russ when he got there compared to when he left. And they're like, this, this guy, isn't really the same person. This guy fucking sucks, dude. Yeah. Yeah, it guy, <laughs> that it appear, that's like kind of how they – all talk about it. And is it because Team 3 got too powerful? Is it because Team 3, you know, started potentially seeing a little success? Team 3 started seeing abilities for Team 3 to make themselves more important in Russ's life. Hey, you, you hey, send them to me. I'll, do, I'll be the... I'll be the guy that kind of handles all that type of stuff. I'll be the lady that takes care of all your scheduling. I'll be the person that does this. And Team 3, remember, they're the ones that said, Seattle can't block for him, they don't let him cook. Right. Statement from Team 3. Mm -hmm. Not Russ. No, much different. The team, mm -hmm. not three. The team was saying this. Uh, and then he went on Dan Patrick. He didn't confirm nor deny what Team Three said, but he said, Team Three, they got their own, mm -hmm. they got their own compound going yeah. on. It's just like, it's a weird fucking situation as Mr. Unlimited guy is. Honestly, because what have we been do told? You have anyone? I'm sorry, do you have anyone that you interact with that you do have to go through somebody, like a proxy to get to them? No, not like interact with them on a regular basis, no. Like, I, and this is, this is why I'm a bad host. I don't like bookers, because I think they're scam artists, bookers. I don't okay. think they're doing anything. So I tried okay. to, I'll say, oh, we'll book. We'll book ourselves. Then I'll reach out to somebody that I think I know, and I'm like, hey, is there any chance you want to come on the show this week? Just let me know. And they're like, yeah, here's my person. Hit me up. I'm like, okay, never talking to you again, yeah. you know? But 
that's probably how it operates mm -hmm. for a lot of people. You know what I mean? So when you're talking about day-to-day -day personal stuff, there's no yeah. human remaining in my life that I cannot talk to, right? I, we all only have yeah. a certain amount of Why days. Why would there be? Can't do it. Professionally, though, I've been sent to a couple people, and I felt like it was a shot, but didn't know if it was a shot because it might just be how they operate. But I definitely learn a lot about the person whenever that happens, if that makes sense. Yeah, I would just feel weird saying that to somebody if I was like, hey, here yeah. we go. Uh, hey, what's your number, man? Uh, here you go. Here is here is Betty's number. You got to go through her, and then she'll let me know, and then she'll write me a note or something. You know what fucked maybe me up? she'll give you a voicemail. You know what fucked me up? What? Peyton Manning fucked me up. Because why? Because he's a human. Yeah, I'm fucking. I'm. I'm pretty cool to see that, huh? Yeah, like this dude's. His head is more famous than any of you <laughs> motherfuckers mm -hmm. that I'm talking to right now. So like, if this guy is just like interacting with everybody, texting everybody, hey, you want to do this? I got you. I'll do this. I'll do that. And then I meet somebody else that is <whistles> way right, but trying to become, trying to become Peyton. Like you could tell, like. This is what the Manning thing did. I'm going to try to go do that. It's like, it's hard for me to take that person serious because I'm like, that's not, mm -hmm. that's, this isn't the right way to go about doing stuff, I don't think. But hey, I'm also a stooge. You probably don't want to talk to us. Just send me to whoever fuck you got to. But it is yeah. an interesting, that Richard Sherman, Marshall, and Lynch conversation was alarming. And I think a lot of the shit that we're seeing out of Russ is alarming because it's vastly different than what we've been led to believe this entire time.